Hey everybody, Tom Scarella. Uh, today we're going to talk to you about, in the subject of divine healing in this healing school, we want to talk to you just for a few minutes on the subject of dominion and authority in healing. Coming right up. It's going to be awesome. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, Tom Scarella with Scarella Ministries. Listen, don't forget right below me. Give us a big thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us know where you're watching this in the world. We love to hear from you and love to hear your input. We love to hear from you as far as, uh, you know, where you're from in the world. And, and uh, yeah, we want to be your friend on social media as well. So don't forget, subscribe to that. Check out our uh, uh, website as well below all right, let's dive into this today. In, and let's start in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 10 um, says, After these things, the Lord pointed another 70 also, and he sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into the harvest uh, and go your ways and send you as lambs amongst wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, or sandals, and greet no one along the road. Whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. In other words, look for somebody that's looking for peace. Or look for somebody that's, we would say, hungry or open. Okay, And if a son of peace is there, or a man of peace, your Bible may say, or someone looking for peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give for the labors worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house, okay? And whatever city you enter and receive you, eat such things that are set before you. Heal the sick that are there. Notice it doesn't say pray for the sick. It says what? Heal the sick that are there and say to them what? The kingdom of God has come near to you, right? Then it talks about those that receive you, et cetera, et cetera. But he starts off on the subject of healing. One of the first things that he says, he says, you're going to start throwing out peace. Whoever's hungry, whoever's thirsty, whoever's looking for peace, wham, they're going to want it. Heal the sick that are there, right? Then he says, then proclaim to them the kingdom of God has come near to you today, right? Then as you keep on going, in verse 17, then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us by your name. And he said, I saw Satan fall from like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in this, but that the spirits, are, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Okay, so he's kind of giving them a gut check. All right, but what we're talking about today is just in those two other, a few other verses is a primarily verse 19. He says, I give you authority, authority, dominion and authority. Now in the Old Testament, now if you go way back to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter one, sorry, Genesis one, in verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, let them have dominion Ah, over the fish of the sea or the birds of the air, the, over the cattle, over, uh, over all the earth and over everything that creeps on the earth. And so God created man in his image and in the image he created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Or one version says, take authority over it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So the first thing God gave man in the garden was dominion and authority. The first thing that, uh, of course, you know, um, uh, Adam went and sinned. And as a result, he lost his authority and dominion. So when Jesus came, what does he restore? The first thing he does, he restores back to mankind dominion and authority. Okay, so dominion and authority is absolutely imperative for ministering healing to the sick. That we need to know that a, a sickness and disease does not have authority over us. Jesus was our model. If Jesus was our model in holiness, 
Jesus was our model also in ministering healing to the sick. How do I know that? We see the book of Acts. We literally watch the disciples mirror the master. They don't say, he's God, I'm not God, I can't do anything, I can't do anything, I'm a nobody, I'm a zero, I'm an ant, I'm worse than an ant, I, I, I'm just a heathen, I'm just a sinner, saved by grace. Is that what they said? No, they didn't say that. Peter said in Acts chapter 3, look at us. And he went and he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. He doesn't say such as God has way up in heaven. He says, I have it. I have it. In other words, I have dominion. I have authority. <laughs> okay? So you have it. If you're in Christ, you've been given dominion. You've been given authority. All right? Over what? Over the devil, over evil spirits, over sickness, disease, sin, and death. Right? Just exactly like Jesus ministered, just like Paul did. You see, all the way through the book of Acts, once... Once you go through those first nine chapters of Acts, okay, it primarily focuses on Peter up until about chapter nine. You know, I mean, he's sporadically in there, but he's kind of primarily the focus. Because prior, you know, prior to Acts nine, the gospel was primarily just to the Jew only. But once chapter nine came, everything changed by those four visions. There were four visions given. Two were given to sinners, two were given to saints. And that's when Paul comes onto the scene and he primarily goes to the Gentiles. And as Paul primarily goes to the Gentiles, what do we see? Is we see Paul primarily going to, not, not, not only, he always, every city and village he went, he would always minister first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. That was just Paul's pattern. But even into the 28th chapter, we see Paul still ministering divine healing. We see him even getting bit by a snake and just throws it off of him. They thought he was going to die. What does that show? He had dominion. He had authority. Dominion and authority. I mean, I could give you so many testimonies regarding ministering healing that the moment you have a mindset, it's really in your mindset. That's why Jesus came preaching repent. Repent doesn't mean cry. Repent means change the way you think change your thought process. So divine healing has a lot to do with your thought process. So now it's not soulish or mental power, but it's spiritual power by the, by the finished work of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, it has to go through an earthen vessel. And it, so it has to go through the way that we think. So we have to change our thoughts. You have to change your thoughts. I have to change my thoughts. We have to change the way that we think and the, the way that we operate, so to speak. Otherwise, what happens is, is we begin to function out of an Old Testament mindset. And we're calling on God to come down. Come down, Lord. Come on down. Please come on down and do all this work. Well, the Lord's not going to do it. Uh, that's why he's commissioned you and that's why he's commissioned me. And so we have a purpose to play. And, and what's our purpose? To die and go to heaven? No, our purpose is to propagate the gospel with power. Amen? And how do we propagate the, the gospel with power? We do so with a mindset of dominion and authority. Dominion and authority. And the moment you start to minister to sickness that way. Now listen, I was a brand new Christian way back, almost uh, almost 40 years ago, 38 years ago, and I was ministering healing to the sick because I read in a book from T.L. Osborne called Healing the Sick, he talked about dominion and authority. And once I realized, like a policeman has been given a badge, he doesn't have physical power to stop a car, he has authority to stop the car with nothing but his hand. He can say, stop, and you have to stop. Not in his name, but in the name that he's representing that's behind him, and that's the entire city. Or if it's a state patrol, then it's the entire state, right? Okay, so, so you have to know that's what uh, dominion and authority is. Now, we don't have dominion and authority over people. We don't have authority over people, but we have dominion and authority over all sickness, over all disease, over all demons. There's not one demon that we cannot. You understand? 
And so, uh, in fact, the one time the disciples said, we tried to cast a demon out of this boy and we could not. The father even said it to Jesus. Jesus, your disciples tried to cast a demon out, couldn't get it out. Jesus turns to them and says, O faithless generation, how long shall I endure this? And they said, Master, why could we not cast the demon out? And Jesus said, immediately, because of your unbelief. And one version says it like this, because of your two thoughts. What two thoughts? You have authority or you don't have authority. And you wrestle with those two thoughts. And as a result, what happens is, is nothing is done. You understand? But when you come with a mindset, a single thought of, I have authority over this. No matter how big it is, no matter how bad it is, no matter how much the doctors say she's dying, he's dying, doesn't matter. I have authority over it. I've been put in this position for this time. Uh, for such a time as this, God has set me up here right now. And my purpose is to bring healing and dominion and authority and to set this person free from the power of the devil or to set this person free from the power of sickness, tumors, whatever it might be, you understand? And so, uh, but, but you have to get this thought of this mindset of authority, of dominion. You have to have a dominion mindset that I have authority. I've been given authority. What have you been given authority to do? To just go to heaven? No, your dominion and your authority is over the power of the enemy. And, and I mean, I could just tell you of so many times of sickness and disease where we've just taken authority. I just take authority over that right now in the name of Jesus. I stop it. We were on God TV one time. We were uh, on uh, live God TV. And uh, we were doing this event with this other minister. And it wasn't our night to minister. Well, he ministered to a bunch of people and the lady that was dying of cancer. There's a long story to it. I've told it before in great depth, but she was in real bad shape. Doctors gave her about 72 hours to live and she smelt like death and she was full of cancer and she was crying and crying and smelt so bad and stuff. And she fell down and she wasn't healed. And so the other minister said, Tom, can you minister to this woman? I said, sure. And I just walked over to her. God didn't tell me what to say. I just did it. And I just grabbed her by the hand. I said, stop crying. Look at me. I bring you healing today in the name of Jesus, such as I have. Come on, right? Such as I have. Not such as God has. I'm a zero. I'm a nothing. Don't look at me. I'm not worthy. I'm just here. I'm, I'm just a vessel. That's, that's all religious crap, okay? I don't care who you are. That's religious crap. That's just to make yourself feel better about yourself. Stop, focus. I'm a nobody, I'm a nothing. I couldn't heal an ant's wing. Well, the Bible says you can heal the sick. Both Luke chapter 10 and Matthew chapter 10, Jesus said, heal the sick. He doesn't say, you can't do it. It's only me that does it, but I do it through. No, 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 no. All of that is religious crap that goes on in religious people's minds to make excuses why they're not gonna get healed before I pray for them. How about this? How about you just take authority and dominion and watch the miracle take place. What if you have a different mindset rather than that, oh, I couldn't heal, I can't heal, I can't do anything. Only God, and, uh, not me, don't look at me. Uh, oh, come on, please, that's so pathetic. It's such a religious cop-out, you understand? So don't have that mindset. And that's what I did with this woman. I said, woman, look at me, I bring you healing today. I bring you healing today. I said, such as I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And I took her by the hand and she stood up and she was all ash and gray from the, the cancer. And I went and I took off walking with her and boom, she was healed just like that. How did that happen? Someone asked me, did God tell you to do that? I said, no, I didn't need to. God already told me in here. Yeah, God told me right here. I didn't need to hear it from up here. I already heard it in this thing called the Bible, <laughs> right? So God's given you authority. So it's time to exercise your authority. Remember in the Old Testament, God told Joshua, just wherever your foot treads, I'll give it to you. Remember what God said to Abraham? Abraham, lift up your eyes as far as you see, north, south, east, and west, I'll give it to you. In other words, 
As far as you can see, your dominion, your authority allows you to see, I'll give it to you. So God didn't draw, draw the boundary for Joshua or for Abraham. Their faith in what God had commissioned them to do was their only limitation. Amen. I pray this blessed you today in the name of Jesus. Don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click like, and uh, click the notification bell for future upcoming videos as well. Hey, don't forget as well, check out our other website, ministrytraininginstitute.com. We have tons of video training Bible school stuff there. I think you'll love it. And guess what? There's no exams. <laughs> All right, love you guys. Bless you. Don't forget, watch the next video coming up in this series.